This is the Magic Word Podcast.com. Hello, this is Scott Wells for the Magic Word Podcast.com. This week I thought I would deliver to you a rather brief podcast uh, about me. I've had several people who have said we would like to know a little bit more about you and if you could give us a podcast that someone perhaps turned the tables on you and they could ask you questions instead of you being the person who is always asking the questions so we can learn a little bit more about you. This actually was done back in September of 2016 when Jamie Salinas actually had uh, talked with me, and it was called Turning the Tables on Scott Wells. It was episode number 321, and it went into a lot more depth. And since that time, a lot of things have happened in my life, and I think it's uh, worth talking about. And recently, and I say recently, in uh, November 2021, I was the cover on a feature article for the MUM magazine that was written by Tom Vorchahan, called Three Degrees of Separation from Scott Wells, meaning that either you know Scott or you know someone who knows Scott. So anyhow, I thought uh, you might like to hear this was something that kind of surprised me. I found that there was a podcast that someone had actually taken that article and had converted this into a podcast of two people talking back and forth about me. Apparently, they found it interesting enough that they... Uh, publish this or broadcast this. So anyhow, it's a a brief thing. And I thought, uh, since this is Thanksgiving, I will just give you a a short podcast and let you get back to your time with your family and friends and enjoying your food and football. So I'm going to step out of the way and uh, let you listen to this deep dive featuring people talking about Scott Wells. (laughs) Welcome to your deep dive. Today, um, today we're going to explore something uh, pretty fascinating. The idea that everyone in the magic world is connected by just three degrees of separation. Yeah, like the whole six degrees of Kevin Bacon thing. Exactly. But for magicians. Right. And at the center of it all is this guy named Scott Wells. That's right. So we're going to dive into his life and how he kind of exemplifies this. Yeah. So to start off just... Who I.S. Scott Wells, what makes him so central to this whole idea? Well, he is 73 years old. Yeah. And he has been immersed in magic for nearly 50 years. Wow. And and get this, he actually has a background in journalism. Oh, that's interesting. I could totally see how that would shape his path. I mean, a journalist is always looking for connections, right? Absolutely. They're digging for the story behind the story. Exactly. And you can see those skills at play mm. throughout his entire magic career. And his journey starts... Very classically Boy Scouts, you know? Yeah. Those magic shops learning from the Tarbell course. Uh But here's where it gets interesting. He didn't just dabble. Scott was doing hundreds of shows. He was even raising his fees strategically just to buy more magic books. Wow. That's dedication. He was not just in it for the applause. Not at all. He was building a foundation. Yeah. He was learning his craft inside and out. Yeah. And that kind of dedication, that thirst for knowledge... That really sets the stage for everything that comes after. So let's talk about what comes after. I mean, this man was friends with George W. Bush. I know, right? <laughs> Not a lot of magicians can say that. Right. And and it wasn't just a casual acquaintance. Okay. They worked together on a United Way campaign back in 1981. Wow. And it was themed, thanks to you, it works like magic. A future president and a magician teaming up for charity? It's like, what conversations were they having behind the scenes? I would love to know. Oh, my gosh. But, you know, this connection with President Bush, it speaks to something important about Scott. He's Mm -hmm. comfortable in many worlds, Mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. It's not just magic. Uh He also had a really successful corporate career in the energy industry. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But even in that corporate world, he was finding ways to connect it back to magic. Right. He'd often talk about how sales and marketing have all these parallels to performing illusions. Absolutely. Absolutely. He saw the common thread, right? Yeah. Persuasion, storytelling, connecting with your audience on an emotional level. Mm-hmm. It's like magic was always simmering beneath the surface. Yeah. You know, and forming his approach to everything. That's fascinating. And speaking of connections, we can't talk about Scott without mentioning Kathy. Oh, of course. His wife and his biggest supporter, their story is just amazing. Well, it's an incredible story. And talk about a meet cute. Yeah. He was stood up on their first date. And he went to confront her about it. What? That takes guts. Yeah. And, you know, that confrontation, it turned into a lifelong love. 
Uh, and a partnership both on and off the stage. And Kathy wasn't just a bystander in his magic career either. No, not at all. She was a participant. She was right there with him. Yeah. She assisted in his stage shows. I love it. She performed with doves and rabbits. She even helped him develop a mind-reading act that they took on cruise ships. Wow. They were a true magic duo. Absolutely. And sadly, their story takes a really poignant turn Yeah. Um, with Kathy's passing in 2018. And I was reading about their final standing ovation performance just days before her brain tumor diagnosis. Yeah. It's heartbreaking, but it also just, you know, it really underscores how deeply intertwined magic was with their lives. Yeah. You know, it was more than just a profession. It was a shared language of love and connection. Yeah. You know? Yeah, it really makes you think, you know, life is so full of twists and turns. It is. And sometimes those most magical moments are also the most fragile ones. Yeah. But I want to shift gears a little bit and talk about, you know, Scott's impact on the wider magic world. Okay. You know, we're, we're exploring this idea of three degrees of separation. So how did he go from like a successful Texas magician to this globally connected figure? Yeah, it's fascinating how he transitioned from being like a big fish in a smaller pond to someone who's recognized internationally. And a lot of that has to do with his work beyond performing. Okay. Scott is a prolific writer. Really? Oh, yeah. Syndicated columns, articles for major magic magazines. He's even contributed tricks to some famous magic books. So he wasn't content with just mastering his own craft. He wanted to document it. He wanted to share it. Exactly. He wanted to share the magic that was happening all around him. Yeah. And this is where that three degrees idea starts to take shape. Okay. For almost a decade, Scott was the convention editor for Magic Magazine. Wow. Think about that. Attending and reviewing hundreds of conventions. Oh, my gosh. Meeting countless magicians. Yeah. Getting a pulse on the entire community. He was at the heart of it all. He was at the heart of it all, making connections that most magicians could only dream of. Yeah. He wasn't just passively observing. He was actively building bridges. Okay. Between performers, creators, everyone in that magic ecosystem. Yeah. And this all kind of culminates in what might be his most impactful contribution. Which is? The Magic Word Podcast. Oh, yeah. This is where it all comes together. This is it. The podcast is like a living archive of all those connections. Exactly. How did he even get into podcasting in the first place? Well, he was inspired by Dodd Vickers. Okay. Who is often called the pod father of magic podcasts. Oh, wow. And Scott saw the potential of this medium yeah. to really connect with a global audience. Yeah. And he just dove right in. So for people who aren't familiar with the Magic Word podcast, describe it for us. What's the format? What makes it so special? Well, it's deceptively simple. Okay. Interviews with magic icons, convention reports, mm. basically capturing the energy and the excitement of the magic world. Yeah. Yeah. But here's the thing. Scott doesn't just ask the standard questions. Oh, he digs deeper. Oh, he digs deeper. He finds those personal stories. Yeah. The behind the scenes moments yeah. that you wouldn't hear anywhere else. I read somewhere that he compared his interview style to Jerry Lewis interviewing kids. It's an apt comparison. Really? There's a playfulness. Uh-huh. A genuine curiosity that disarms even the most seasoned magician. Wow. It brings out a vulnerability and honesty that you don't often hear in those more formal interviews. So it's like he creates a space where the magic isn't just in the illusions, it's in the human connection itself. Exactly. That's beautiful. No wonder it's so popular. I know. And it is huge. Over 800 episodes, 5,000 subscribers, listeners in over 130 countries. Wow. That's not just about magic. That's about Scott's ability to create a community. So for our listeners who are now intrigued. Yeah. What are some episodes that really showcase what the Magic Word podcast is all about? Oh, there's something for every taste, but a few that stand out okay, for like yeah. intriguing life stories. Uh -huh. The Paul Daniels and Sean Farquhar episodes are must listens. Okay. You get a sense of their journeys, the highs and lows of a magic career. What about for like a peek behind the curtain? You know those episodes with Stephen Bargatze, Rick Merrill, and David Corsaro on comedy writing? Oh, those are gold. Really? You get insights into their creative process, mm -hmm. you know, how they craft these hilarious magic routines. Yeah. If you're at all interested in the art of performance, yeah. those are essential listening. And he's had some really big names on the show, too. Oh, yeah. I mean, Kevin James, Michael Goddard, the artist. It's incredible the range of guests that he attracts. It speaks to his reputation yeah. and that welcoming atmosphere that he creates. Yeah. Even someone like Michael Goddard, whose primary art isn't magic, 
Right. He had this fascinating conversation with Scott uh, about the creative process. And you can't forget about the scoops. Oh, the scoops. That episode where he broke the news about Randy Pitchford buying Genie magazine. Oh, that was a classic. That caused quite a stir. Yeah, it showed that the Magic Word podcast wasn't just fluffy interviews. Mm -hmm. You know, Scott wasn't afraid to tackle the controversies. Yeah. And the behind the scenes drama of the magic world. It's that journalistic instinct coming through again. It is He's old. always got his ear to the ground. He does. Looking for the real story. But even beyond the podcast, you know, Scott's been finding all these creative ways to connect with the magic community. Absolutely. When the pandemic hit, he didn't just sit back and wait. What did he do? He launched Magic and Martinis. What? This virtual happy hour that brought magicians together online. I love that. It was brilliant. Yeah. A casual conversational space where everyone could hang out, chat, and share stories. I love that the videos are still available online. It's like this little time capsule of that period. It is, and it shows Scott's commitment Yeah. to keeping the magic alive, even when those in-person gatherings weren't possible. Okay, I have to ask about those odd facts from the article. Okay. The one about him playing the cornet. Oh, yeah. That really surprised me. I know. Right from sixth grade through college. Wow. And and he ran for school board at 24. What? And won. He is a man of many talents. Many talents and many passions. Yeah, it really paints a picture of him, not just the magician, but the person behind it all. It does. And it makes you wonder, what drives someone like that? You yeah. know, what fuels that seemingly endless energy and enthusiasm? Well, stay tuned because we're about to dive into just the, it, it, we're going to explore the deeper motivations behind Scott's work and how his legacy continues to shape the world of magic today. We've covered so much. I yeah. mean, but I, I keep thinking, you know, what's at the heart of all this for Scott? Yeah. Like, why magic? Why this drive to connect people? It's a great question. And, and I think part of the answer lies in his own words. He once said, magic is the one art form where the audience wants to be lied to. Mm. There's this inherent desire in us, right? Yeah. To believe in the impossible. And Scott taps into that. But it's not just about fooling people, is it? No, not at all. There's a generosity to his approach. It's yeah. like he wants to share that sense of wonder, the, yeah. that joy of discovery. Absolutely. And, yeah. and I think that generosity, it, it extends beyond the audience. Right. You know, through his writing of the podcast, even those magic and martini sessions mm. he's created a space for magicians to connect yeah to learn from each other and to keep the art form thriving so he's not just performing magic he's nurturing a whole community around it exactly and that brings us back to this three degrees of separation idea right it's not just a fun concept yeah it points to a deeper truth about the magic world yeah collaboration is key it is. So many of the stories that we've talked about highlight that. They do. You know, from Kathy's integral role in his act uh -huh. to the way that he champions other magicians on his podcast. Yeah. Scott thrives on that collaboration. He does. And think about those convention years. Yeah. That wasn't just about reviewing shows. Right. It was about being present. Mm -hmm. Building those relationships that would then ripple outwards yeah. through the community. It makes you wonder, you know, how many collaborations, yeah. how many incredible magic moments wouldn't have happened without Scott playing that connector role? Countless, I would wager. Yeah. It's like yeah. he's planted seeds of magic all over the world and they're blossoming. Yeah. In ways that he couldn't have even predicted. It's inspiring. But it also makes me think about you know, the potential downsides oh, okay. of such interconnectedness. Like, what happens when disagreements arise? Yeah. Or when different styles clash? That's a valid point. Yeah. You know, a tight-knit community can sometimes feel insular. Right. Resistant to change. And and the magic world definitely has its share of debates yeah. and controversies, just like any art form. Has Scott ever talked about those challenges on his podcast? Oh, absolutely. Okay. He doesn't shy away from tough conversations. Okay. Remember that episode where he broke the news about Randy Pitchford buying Gene A magazine? Yeah, yeah. I mean, that sparked a lot of debate. Yeah, it did. Within the magic community. It shows that even with all this connection, yeah. there's still room for healthy disagreement, uh -huh. for challenging the status quo. Exactly. Yeah. And, and I think that's a crucial part of keeping any art form vital. Yeah. It's not just about passing down traditions. It's about evolving. 
pushing boundaries, having those tough conversations that spark new ideas. And Scott, through his platform, creates that space for sure. those conversations to happen. He's like a master weaver, you know, yeah. bringing together these diverse threads to create this rich and vibrant tapestry of magic. What a beautiful image. And and it really captures the essence of what we've been exploring today. You yeah. Know, Scott Wells isn't just a magician. He's a facilitator of magic. Uh huh a connector of people and a champion of the art form. And his story shows us that, you know, the real magic, it doesn't just lie in the illusions. Right. It's in the connections we make. Yeah. And the communities that we build. Well said. So if you're out there listening and you're feeling inspired, yeah. why not explore some of the resources we've mentioned? Absolutely. Dive into the Magic Word podcast, seek out Scott's writings, or heck, even attend a magic convention. Who knows? You might find yourself just three degrees away from Scott Wells. You might. Caught up in that magic of connection yeah. that he so generously shares with the world. Absolutely. And that's a wrap on our deep dive into the fascinating world of Scott Wells. Until next time, keep exploring, keep connecting, and keep the magic alive. Bye, everyone. Okay. I hope that you enjoyed that. Uh, I found that to be fascinating on many levels. And let me now kind of pull the curtain back and let you see the Wizard of Oz. So this whole podcast has been about AI generation, artificial intelligence. From the very get-go, you noticed, of course, the, where there was a different voice for the intro. I didn't have like the James Earl Jones uh, introduction as normal. The voice you heard was AI-generated voice. I even went online to have some AI music that was specially written that you notice was a little bit different on the front end of this program and will be on the back end here as well. And the most important thing is the podcast that you heard between the two people on this deep dive, including the music, both in and out, I had actually recorded that music using suno.com, that's S-U-N-O, uh, but uh, I, I added that uh, to their podcast, and I say there, actually, that was completely AI generated using a program called notebooklm.google, and it is obviously amazing. I just merely had taken the article that Tom had written, and I uploaded that or just copied and pasted the article, and they did the rest. It was not written that way. That was just their interpretation of the article that was written. It is something that I think is just beyond amazing about how cool that comes in. And you can put in anything you want, whether it's going to be an outline or whether it's going to be a full article or whatever that you want. And it will talk about, they will develop a podcast in which people will talk about whatever it is, which is kind of a cool thing. If you take, for example, from your web page, the about section and plug that in, then they can generate a podcast of two people talking. So you can put that on your website saying, if you don't want to read this, you can listen to the podcast of people talking about whoever you are and about the magic you do. Give it a try. Again, notebooklm.google. It's pretty darn cool. I first heard about this from my friend John Gaspard, who is the author of the Eli Marks Magic Detective series, and he had heard this then from David Williamson. And so that was passed on down from one magician to another, and so I'm passing it on to you. I just, uh, again, think this whole thing is pretty incredible. And uh, But uh, not to fear, next week and in future weeks, certainly we're going to go back to our regular <laughs> music that I use and the intro and uh, everything else. I, I like what I have used before. I've, I have kind of become accustomed to that music, and I hope that you like the music that we use from week to week also. Anyhow... I just hope that you enjoyed this week's episode about uh, AI generation, and perhaps it might inspire you to do a little bit of uh, research into AI, in including AI-generated images of yourself. It's incredible what you can do with chat, GPT, etc. So until next week, stay well, get booked, and <laughs> don't let the machines win. <laughs> this is Scotty out. Scotty out.